So one of the proper scoops that uh, you could have a go on for the first time in the UK at the Wheelbase demo this weekend was Transition's new Scout. Literally went out to dealers on Friday, so the people riding it here this weekend, first people in the UK to get a leg over one. And there is a lot to talk about. I'm mean, obviously super popular, involving sort of poppy all round trail bike, but for this year it gets a whole new Torre frame, so a lighter, stiffer frame. Uh, it's still 140 mil at the back, 150 mil at the front, but you can extend that 10 mil at either end to 160, 150. You've got more clearance in the back there for wider tyres, and it comes in GX, NX, and X01 builds all of which are absolutely belt in value compared to you know, other top end sort of sought after names. And they've really gone in on the detailing as well. You've got this little, uh, you've seen this on more and more bikes now, uh, the little mount there, which there's not so many available now, but there's gonna be a whole set of frame storage bags coming through on that. Uh, bottle cage on the inside, as you'd hope. And you can just see these much wider, you know, much sort of stiffer, uh, tube set that just really lets this bike pop and jive about. Still the same excellent kinematic on the rear end. Uh, still, the same, you know, they were one of the first people to go with short offset uh, forks for that really, really kind of stable but interactive handling. And also just little details like the fact that all the internal cable routing now goes all the way through. So super easy to service, super easy to work on. Proper rider's bike, this transition scout. So one bike that the, uh, wheelbase riders can't get enough of and the guides who are running the wheelbase rides can't get enough of apparently is Kona's remote 160 and I'm gonna uh, jib my job here and let Scott from Kona talk you through this one. Hey guys so uh, yeah new for this year is um, Kona remote 160 we've based an e-bike around our generation 2 process design here's the bike I can come the film down so we've essentially got 160 mil of travel uh, Shimano motor uh, 504 watt uh, hour battery 65 degree head angle, 435 mil chainsail end, so super, super fun. People are coming back with massive smiles on the face and saying, this ride's like an armor bike, not just an e-bike, so, you know, that's what you want. Yeah, so based on all the process good times, but yeah. with a bunch of extra power and the range behind it. Exactly, so you can do the hill five times instead of two. Sounds like, a, sounds like a laugh. And e-bikes are your big thing this weekend? Uh, I think it is everywhere. But yeah, yeah, the e-bikes have been very popular. We've been running around with batteries trying to charge them all over the place to make sure we've got charging the bikes for every ride. So yeah, it's been, it's been very well received. Cool. Okay, cheers Scott. Right. Thanks a lot, have a good day. So I'll go so far as to say this bike behind me now, the Merida E160 is the bike that pretty much started the proper e-mountain bike revolution. I can remember last year coming to this wheelbase demo and it was so popular, couldn't even get one to film. I had to nick Toby's out of the shop and carry it very carefully out to here so the tires didn't get wet. And there's a lot of familiarity uh, with that original E160, which is pretty much constantly sold out and that's no bad thing. So same kinematic at the rear end, uh, same big piggybacks Fox shock, uh, but so it's really fluid, supple ride. Uh, I mean, that was the thing. It really made take advantage of that uh, extra weight from the uh, Shimano motor and the battery in there. Uh, that was, you know, that was one of the real standout things. That and the fact it had proper handling, you know, and they've just tweaked what was already a brilliant package. So in terms of the handling, 65 degree head angle now, it's uh, slightly longer, slightly lower, still got a decent short back end, but now it's a full carbon mainframe. And so, based around this Shimano internal battery in there, still a Shimano steps motor in the bottom, just super reliable with this neat little remote up there. And you've got these big cooling fins here as well to keep everything, I mean, I don't think that's gonna be a problem today, but you know, it's good to know the motor's gonna be running efficiently, your battery's gonna be running efficiently because uh, heat buildup can be a problem if you're taking these abroad. But, and the other major thing is they've now gone mullet. So you've got a 29 by 2.5 up front and a 27.5, 2.6 on the rear. But, this is called the 10K because, you know, it's this is the Merida E160 10K, which means you've got the absolute best of everything. You've got Fox Factory Fork, you've got Fox Factory uh, Rear Shock, you've got these superb DT Swiss Carbon Hybrid 30 wheels. Not only are they surprisingly like that, absolutely bomb proof. I know people who've just given these so much grief. And speaking to Andy from Merida, he says, they ran them all last year and they didn't have a single issue. They didn't even have to replace a single spoke on them. Uh, and when demo bikes are being ridden as hard as these are, that's something pretty outstanding. So there you go, only minor tweaks in terms of the numbers, but that all new carbon mainframe makes it lighter, makes it stiffer. Wheels are lighter and stiffer for more responsiveness and an absolute top of the range Fox Factory and Shimano XTR spec. 10K is a hell of a lot of money, but then this is a hell of a lot of bike. 
So one bike that's uh, new to the 80 stable for this demo year is the SV165 and obviously all the five suffix bikes are the 27.5 wheel ones and it turns out 27.5 is still a thing they're getting loads of demand for this bike just because it suits riders uh, who like something a bit more agile a bit stiffer wheel set a bit more poppy and playable and this just takes that sort of talent to the absolute max so right in the center there you can't miss it fox coil shock uh, slightly modified switch infinity link linkage in there so you've got these two little fox shafts i mean read that up on the internet basically a very very clever suspension system that moves comes up to this inflection point where you can see that top watermark and changes the way the pe pedaling transforms from like quite a stiff efficient pedaling bike comes over the top of that and then it's just all plush all play with a really really nice progressive ramp up on it and these bikes are so much fun i mean like the name suggests 165 mm travel then you've got the big fox 36 fork up front 63.5 degree head angle 77 degree seat angle so the whole bike is just super slack on the front for control and then pushing you forwards for that maximum engagement maximum responsiveness this is a proper player but with the plush coil shock action and that it looks like a little steam engine in there but i would say that is a fun engine as corny as that sounds this bike is an absolute ripper another brand super busy here at the wheelbase demo weekend and with the biggest stand and probably uh, the biggest range of bikes are cube and in fact they've got so many e-bikes here this weekend when they plugged in all the batteries to recharge them last night they completely took out the power grid for kendall and had to uh, reset the trip switches when they all kicked off so hopefully things are going to go a bit smoother for them today hey jano <laughs> it was him folks not us anyway stereo action team hbc hybrid all those words in some kind of order probably not the right one uh 27.5 inch 160 mil travel carbon framed bosch powered power tube battery equipped e, e all-rounder i would say on this it's not the uh, longest bike i mean for reach on this uh, large is around 440 head angle is 65 so you know reasonably reasonably relaxed head angle but not super you know progressive so it's a more sort of balanced trail position than it is an out and out kind of low long racer bike but the spec you get on this bike is absolutely outstanding uh, as you can see full factory fox 36 up front fox dpx2 piggyback at the rear and you even get a fox transfer gold you know fox transfer dropper post with this gold factory kashima coating on there like i say full carbon front end alloy rear end just because it's a little bit cheaper and a little bit tougher 160 mil travel and you've got these Newman SL 35 mil wide rims with Schwalbe super gravity tires front and rear so super tough super grippy just a brilliant match for uh, you know aggressive e-bike use and you've also got features in terms of you know you've got this race face carbon bar on there you've got XT shifters and this Bosch you know it's the top of the range Bosch Keox head unit here so not only does it give you your speed, your range, all that kind of standard stuff, but even do things like heart rate and how much you've worked as well as the bike's worked. Because that's one thing people, you know, people see these e-bikes as a cheater bike, but you get one of these systems on there, you'll be amazed like how many calories, how much, you know, what your heart rate's at when, when you're riding one of these. Because it's not that you take a shorter ride, you just go further and push yourself equally as hard, you just get further for that effort. And what you really get a lot more of for this bike is bike for the price because this whole bike even with this full kashima setup carbon frame like i say it's an xt e13 mix top of the range tires there's absolutely nothing you have to change on this bike to have an absolute top of the range performance but for under five and a half thousand pounds you'd be hard pressed to get that kind of spec on a non-powered bike let alone a, an e-bike for that price and of course uh, cube have also got their full lineup of uh, analog unpowered bikes i'm the julia <laughs> and while e-bikes are obviously the massive trend we're seeing in terms of you know what people are riding here today uh, another real growing trend is i guess because people aren't you know are switching to e-bikes for longer travel applications now for that sort of self-uplift setup is bikes that are just maximizing the attitude but with like a medium travel setup and one that completely exemplifies this is the all new nuke proof reactor so this is the 27.5 bike so it's 150 front 140 rear but it also comes in a 29er version as well 130 rear 140 mil front although that does get a little confusing because if you go for the top of the line rs model you get an extra 10 mil travel uh, in the fork at the front uh, various five different models from comp through to that rs 
uh, the bottom two have an alloy mainframe, but they all have full carbon rear end. So as you can see, just the lines on this is so neat, so sleek, really nicely put together. And obviously, you know, Nuke Proof have got so much experience getting that kinematic on the rear end right. Classic four bar, just super neutral, great traction, minimal pedal interruption, just a bike that properly connects you to the ground. And speaking of connecting to your ground, every single bike in the range gets this awesome Maxxis tyre spec. So Asagai Super Grippy up front, 3C Max Terra Exo Plus Protection, those are all the badges that you want. If you want to, you know, maximum grip on the front end, and then for a bit more speed and a bit more reactivity on the rear end, you've got this Minion DHR2. So a little bit faster rolling, but again, still a 2.4 on there, and still triple compound Max Terra with Evo Plus protection, so that's slightly heavier duty casing on there. So these are bikes that can properly take a beating. You know, if you do manage to get to the bottom of that 140 mil travel on this bike, you know the tyres aren't going to give out. And, you know, these are just bikes that are super poppy, super involving. Just an absolute riot to ride by all accounts. And, uh, you know, just spec detailing all the way through is just really, really neat. You know, you've got Posh Reverb lever there, you've got all sorts, you've got SRAM and Shimano options. So, However you like, you like your bike spec, there's going to be a nuke proof that suits you and pricing super competitive all the way through the range. So, yeah, Reactor, getting some great reactions at the uh, wheelbase demo day today. And this is why the Lake District has a lot of lakes in it. But to be fair, everyone's out riding and they'll probably be coming back having a brilliant time. But if you wanted to borrow a bike from this demo this weekend to ride as far as you possibly could, then there's really only one answer the Mondraker Dusk RR. So, Mondraker, four geometry, you know, superb handling setup. They were the first people to go with the super short stem, uh, long top tube layout that every, pretty much everyone has copied since then. So you're guaranteed superb handling. You've got a zero suspension system, twin linkage in there for an excellent kinematic, you know, pedals positively but you know consistently really controlled the basic platform is just a superb rider's bike and even on this entry level model you've got these uh, dt swiss x1900 wheels with fast rolling maxis recon tires on there 2.6 is for plenty of volume and then you've got the fox 36 rhythm up front so simple fork but i have to say probably my favorite damper in the whole fox range this uh, grip damper just simple but totally consistent and reliable so you've got a brilliant platform for riding, you know, super tech trails all day long. And what makes it that even easier is the fact that not only have you got standard 600 watt hour battery in this down tube for this uh, Shimano Steps motor, you've also got this 300 watt hour extender. So that gives you an absolutely insane 900 watt hours of full capacity. That's why it's called the Dusk. You can literally ride this thing from dawn to dusk and you're still going to have some battery power left in there probably if you give it a bit of a helping hand through the pedals. So, classic Mondraker handling. Totally sorted spec at an affordable level with this alloy frame. Shimano, it's bomb-proof Shimano motor and then this massive range capacity really sets this Dusk RR apart. Bike that isn't out for demo today, uh, this weekend, but is available from wheelbase to demo is possibly the most exciting news in terms of technology for XC Racing last year. Not least because Trek kept the bike and its unique suspension system hidden under like a neoprene sock for nearly all the season. And that is the new Super Calibre. So what the main, let's get straight to what the fuss is all about. This ISO strut suspension system here, uh, developed with Fox and Trek, you basically got a sleeve within a sleeve on this pump action setup that gives you 60 mm rear wheel travel, full remote lock out there and then relies on flex in these really long OCLV mounting carbon fiber chain stays, seat stays to uh, allow the rear wheel movement and then you've got a proper pivot set up there. So still super stiff and with you know a conventional pivot point in terms of power efficiency which obviously is super important to uh, cross country racers but 150 grams lighter than the previous top fuel bike and then up front you've moved to a more aggressive 69 degree head angle and 74 degree effective seat angle and this is the 9.8 spec so you're still getting a fox stepcast 32 fork with 100 mil travel up front you're getting uh, bontrager's cove elite 30 mil internal carbon fiber wheels and you're getting the xr2 tread in a 2.2 so plenty of tire volume there for control and then oclv carbon fiber handlebars xt spec in terms of brakes gx in terms of drive strain with 
carbon fibre crank on the base as well. You've got carbon fibre seat post. That's even a titanium rail on that Montrose Elite saddle. So even the little detail in there, you know, you've even got like ESI foam grips, racers favourites fitted as standard. They really, it's a proper racers bike is this. So a real sweet spot in terms of performance for price, uh, lightweight, this whole bike comes in just over 10 kilos. And, but it's that, it's the combination of this not block equipped, super accurate tracking mainframe with this unique, you know, really sleekly designed ISO strut system here. I mean, and, and it can be, it's not just like a one trick pony, it can be fully pulled apart and serviced and tuned to ride exactly how you want. It's just designed to deliver that optimum ground between light and stiff enough that XC racers who will normally go for a hard tail won't mind having, a, having the suspension there, but they'll massively benefit in terms of traction and in terms of control on the descent. Obviously, this isn't uh, Trek's first specific short travel, almost soft tail bike. Uh, they had the Golden Fly, which Paolo Pezzo uh, used to race back in 99, 2000. And that became the Trek STP when it came to production. And I absolutely loved one of those. I had one for ages when I was, uh, God, but way back in the day when I was testing for Bike Magic, the first website I worked for. And I, I absolutely love that bike. So it's something I'm really, really excited to try myself. And like I say, it's not available today on the weekend, but Wheelbase have a demo model in store, as well as obviously bikes, you know, ready to buy. And uh, yeah, can't wait for Yolanda Neff to get better and start racing this one for the season. And hopefully I can uh, convince Trek to uh, give me one for test because it's what a super interesting bike. I'd be really, really keen to live ride review. So obviously I've done the uh, top fuel already. Love that bike around Bristol for the uh, eight hour race there. But it'd be really interesting to back to back that and this together. Because I mean, after all, the colours match. So maybe be pretty. Come on, Trek, let me so do it. You'll see me uh, razzing the E150 from White around uh, Winlatter Forest, not far from here, in one of my uh, live ride review videos. But a bike I have ridden, but not reviewed because if I'm honest, it was a demo ride and I forgot the GoPro, which is a definite fail, uh, is this E180. So as the name suggests, 180 mil travel, courtesy of this uh, Fox DHX2 coil shock on the back, and then Fox Performance Elite on this model up front. Uh, same basic frame layout. You got it's completely sealed down tube here for a super stiff, really sort of structurally strong bike. Uh, and the way it ties the front and rear together, I mean, if you've seen the S1, the E150 video, I was absolutely thrapping this downhill. And I have to say, having ridden this 180, it is insane. Uh, me and Neil from White took it out and did, I think it was 12 uh, full uh, climbs and descents of uh, the White Horse. Uh, Kilburn Trails over near me in Yorkshire and it was just just so planted on the descents you know you got super grippy w, uh, Maxxis tyres front and rear uh, big coil shock all this travel and the bike is just so anchored onto the ground you know as you'd hope you've got code RSC anchors nice big rotors on the front loads of tyre grip superb geometry with this crazy low centre of gravity it's not really as obvious when it's hanging off this stand here but this bike is so slammed in terms of how close your feet are to the floor and it's just it just rails and descends like you wouldn't believe and of course because you've got this boss generation 4 motor if you want to go and do another run it's absolutely no problem at all i remember there was one corner i kept getting wrong and neil was just like i was like i was like damn it i got it wrong again and he was like well, we'll just go up and do it again and i was like oh, i can't be asked just to push it back up just for one run he's like just for one corner he's like no no you idiot we'll just ride all the way to the top of the hill and that's what he did i mean like i say under two hours 12 runs, absolutely beast at each run, got, I don't know, got significantly better at each run we did. I think we did like four tracks three times, and third run on each one, I was going faster, I was riding it better and better and better each time. And that's the kind of progression you can make so quickly on the, on an e-bike, and especially one that handles so in, you know, outstandingly well as this super low centre of gravity E180. So, uh, really I best uh, get, one for a proper in, get one in for a proper live ride review. But, you know, as you can see, White only bought the e-bikes for this demo, and it's only because this one, someone had obviously uh, used up all the battery on the first run, that this one's still waiting here. You know, they've had a cracking day out, and uh, you know, so has everyone else. It's just been, uh, I mean, we're in the quiet bit now between the uh, sort of final expert ride, but what a cracking day. People are properly loving the feedback they're getting on bikes. This is a very rare moment of the wheelbase uh, demo this weekend. It is. A Cannondale e-bike with nobody sat on it and nobody booked out to ride it. Now this is the brand new Cannondale Habit, so it's the shorter travel 140mm fork 
130 mil rear end 29er bike. I mean, obviously they had, they had the larger, longer travel Matera before, but this is still, you know, proper, just takes all that sort of habit, super fun DNA, uh, you know, really involving uh, trail bike. I've not even ridden the habit yet. Uh, I've slipped up there, but I have been overtaken by a lot of habits on the trail by people clearly having an absolute ton of fun riding them. So, and it's exactly the same sort of suspension setup as the unpowered habit, but down here you've got this latest Bosch generation four motor you've got the power tube battery sat in this really broad down tube but as you can see they've just kept it as low as possible to keep that center of gravity down I mean it's not as low as the white with the same system but it's in this really neat uh, carbon fiber front end and then an alloy rear end just to keep things affordable and tough at the rear end uh, rolling on recon tires so a little bit faster a little bit smoother from that 2.6 inch carcass but it's still a 3c max terror so a ton of grip there and to be honest don't underestimate the recon in terms of grip absolute favorite tire of mine and then you've got 140 mil fork up front with this RockShox 35 so you know an affordable fork but still got a chunky stanchion on there just to keep it tight and then up you've got Magura brakes front and rear for maximum stopping power i mean it's got these huge Megura 220 mil that was on the front there with these four pot stoppers you are not going to stop a bike quicker than with those Meguras. Uh, and you even get the bosch keox uh top of the range head unit on there which gives you all sorts of information not just your speed and your range things like that they'll even do heart rate and sort of stats about you because, uh, you know, this is designed as a trail bike, so it's a bit of bike designed to cover distance. That's why it's got these easy rolling 2.6 29 tyres on there. This is a bike that isn't purely like a winch up and slam down bike. This is a bike that's properly built for, well, just adding more power and range for your trail biking, but amping up the fun, uh, to excuse a pun, uh, to the absolute maximum. The, I mean, like I say, I've not ridden this. I've not ridden Habit either. But my mate Ross, who's the photographer for MBUK, has a uh, Cannondale e-bike as his long-termer, and he is absolutely loving it. Just says the handling, there's just the way it kind of sinks with him, and he can just ride it really, really naturally. That's the absolute standout takeout for him. And, uh, yeah, he's putting on hundreds of K into his. And I've ridden right around, you know, I've been up Torridon in the Highlands with him on it, and he was definitely enjoying it then. So, uh, I'd best take this back because somebody probably has turned up to ride it now and, uh, yeah, don't want to miss so, out. Last year at the wheelbase demo, I was talking about the Trek Slash as the bike that everyone was taking off the Trek stand, wanted to demo uh, their 29er Enduro bike. But this year, because it's 2020 and everyone seems to be going motorised, it's basically, the, we're talking about the Trek Rail and this is the Rail 9 model, so this is the top-end alloy friend model and then there's another three carbon... Uh, frame rail models as well but essentially this is a bosch motor powered uh trek slash so you've got those 29er wheels with these massive uh se5 you know reinforced team issue 29 by 2.5 tires absolutely superb tire uh you've got these uh line comp 30 mil rims so plenty of support in the rim there uh you've got sram gx gears so you've got full eagle on there then you've got Shimano SLX brakes for maximum stopping power, these 200 mil rotors on there. So totally sorted spec, excellent wheel package. Uh, geometry's really sorted as well. You've got a 65 degree head angle, 75 degree seat angle. So just a nice poised bike, plenty of confidence, but not crazy long or crazy stretched out. Just a really easy bike to get on and ride. Still got room for a bottle cage on there, but obviously the big feature here is this rib battery system. I mean, it's a standard Bosch power tube battery in there, uh, 625 watt hours. Uh, so plenty of range for this Bosch generation four motor, but it's got this unique side loading setup up in there uh, which gives you very easy access if you want to charge the battery uh, separately to the bike you know if you're storing the bike in one place but need to charge the battery inside that's uh, you know a super easy way to do it and it just you know it's that classic pink bike comment in it it looks like a trek session and uh, now it looks like a trek rail it's just that absolutely classic uh, la suspension line up there uh, when you've got the ABP pivot on the back, so the axle goes right the way through the rear pivot, just keeps the braking and the pedaling super neutral, and then it actually uses the reactive through shaft shock, exclusive to Trek. And then because you've got this greater sprung to unsprung rate ratio of the e-bike, because you've got that motor and battery mass in there, it's just even more sensitive. Then up front, you've got RockShox Lyric Select Plus with a charger damper, so tons of control up front as well just you know completely solid really well specced package uh, so no surprise that uh, this is the only one that isn't booked out at the moment and i imagine they'll all be out again for the expert ride which oh folk coming in from uh, one of the demo rides now the midday one 
Uh, looking a bit drier than the last one. And the last bike I'm going to talk about here today is the Focus Jam Squared. So again, it's another bike that I reviewed in the Lake District in one of my really early live ride reviews up in the snow on Hellvelin. Uh, we reviewed the Shimano power bike, uh, which comes with the range extender and has a smaller capacity battery. This is the new uh, Focus Jam 2. So it's got a Bosch Generation 4 motor and it's got a full 625 watt hour power tube battery uh, sat in the base of this you know, large down tube. Uh, still 150mm travel bike, uh, still the same fold suspension system with this little neat little rocker link at the top. Super fluid, but with you know decent pedaling characteristics. So even if you're you know keeping it steady in terms of the motor power, you can you know it's still a really lively pedaling bike. Uh, you've got geometry switch chip at the back there, so you can lower the bottom bracket if you want to, slightly extend the uh, you know and effect, shorten the effective chainstay length. Uh, still got these big recon. 29.26 tyres in there, so a fast rolling tyre to kind of reflect that trail usage. Because uh, obviously you've got the SAM, the longer travel bike, the SAM squared, if you want uh, a longer travel bike, and you've got a Fox 34 rhythm on the fork. So, you know, not the stiffest fork out there, it's, but it's the same fork that uh, Specialized use on their Lebo SL. So very much kind of a trail fork in feel. But you've still got plenty of power there on these SLX four pot stoppers. Uh, you've got, you know, the geometry now 65 degree head angle 60 75 degree seat angle and it's a lot longer in reach as well uh, focus are a little bit short previously but now you've got a 470 mil reach on this large size and last but not least you've got this little bosch uh Keox controller so top of the range controller that doesn't just give you i've said this before but doesn't just give you all your uh, sort of ride data and battery data and motor data. It also gives you quite a lot of personal data in terms of sort of heart rate, calories, you know, wattage, that kind of thing. So you get a real complete picture of how hard you've worked as well as how hard the bike's worked. And uh, just, you know, just probably one of the most mature and evolved e-bikes available now. Still fundamentally the same bike in terms of suspension, but that's not a problem for us. Suspension, you know, not a problem for me. The suspension worked really, really well as it was. Updated in terms of geometry and in terms of uh, motor and battery. And if you still want Shimano, that's still available in uh, top-end models, which also have carbon frames. So you've got choice of aluminium, choice of carbon, and you've got a choice of 27.5 uh, plus wheels or these 29 uh, large volume wheels. So loads of variety in the Focus range. But I think this Jam, this jam Square is going to suit a lot of riders just looking for a really neat, well-proven trail bike. So, you've seen me washing bikes, you've seen me talking about bikes. Now it's time for me to go out and demo a bike myself. So, I've hopped on this new nuke proof reactor, got my GoPro ready, let's hit the hills.